Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at angles formed by parallel and perpendicular or parallel lines and transversals. Remember last time we had a few definitions. Let's let's go ahead and refresh what they are. If we have two lines, let's get a line, two lines, and they're being cut by some transversal, let's say. We have a bunch of pairs of angles. Any angles that are in the same general area like these, I've got a top left one and a top left one, they're corresponding. Anything that are on the same side of the transversal and both in the interior are going to be same side interiors. Different sides of the transversal, both in the interior are alternate interiors. And then anything that is outside and outside on opposite corners is going to be called alternate exteriors. So, first off, let's go ahead and take a look at a pair of angles here. If I go ahead and take out my trusty compass, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I believe I can rotate a compass around. Let me try that for a moment. Here we go. I don't know how exact I'm going to be able to get. I'm going to be able to get roughly, there we go, roughly exact. Notice with my compass, I place it on my drawing here. It looks like, looks to me like we have about a 40 degree angle right here. And that does mean that since this portion was 40, coming up from the other side, we're going to start at zero down here all the way up, we have a 140 degree angle. All right. Now, if we do a little little math, a little arithmetic, we're going to realize that these two lines, or this, this line specifically, is a straight line. It's got to add up to 180. So that means that this makes sense, that these two add up to 180, 40 plus 140. This is going to be a 140 as well. And over here is going to be a 40. What you're going to figure out pretty quickly is that if you move the protractor down, we're going to get 40, 140, 40, and 140 again. All right, so if I move that down, look at the angles formed. It's going towards 40, and it's going towards 140 as well. We have 40s and 140s again. So that means here, I'm going to get rid of my protractor for a second. We had 40s up here. We had 40s right here. We had 40s out here. I'm going to do a couple more. We had some 140s over here, 140s down here. A bunch of angles are going to be equal to each other. All right, a bunch of angles are going to be equal to each other. Some types of pairs of angles are going to be equal to each other. But it looks like other types of pairs add up to 180. So let's see for which type which happens. All right, so let's start out with uh, corresponding. C-O-R-R-E-S-P-O-N-D-I-N-G. Corresponding angles are, well, I have an angle right here. It's corresponding is right here. It looks like they're both 40. In geometry, we'd say they are congruent. Corresponding angles are congruent to one another. If we look at, let's say, alternate interiors. Alternate interiors would be like the 140 and the 140, which are equal to each other. Or the 40 and the 40, which are also equal to each other. It looks like those are also congruent. If we look at alternate exteriors, I'm going to draw that in green, alternate exteriors. We have a 40 and a 40. Yep. We have a 140 and a 140. Yep. It looks like alternate exteriors are also congruent. And I'm going to just go ahead and draw the congruent symbol here. Looks like an equal sign with a squiggle on top. They're also congruent to each other. Again. So you might have gotten a pattern here. Generally, things tend to be congruent to each other. I'm going to go ahead and draw this out in orange. The last type of pair that we have is same side interior. Same side interior, congruent, right? No. Look at this. We have a 140 and a 40. Same side interior is definitely not congruent. They're not the same size. Do notice that they, do, they add up to 180, though. Add up to 180. In geometry, we say they are supplementary. I ran out of room for that word. Oh, well, supplementary, add to 180. All right, I'm going to add to 180. 
That means that we can use those facts to determine several angles. If we have a 70 degree angle right here, that means that all acute angles are going to be 70 degrees. Then all obtuse angles are going to be 180 subtract the 70, which is a 110. All of these bigger angles, all these obtuse angles, are going to be 110. We've already labeled the angles that we need, E, C, F, E to C to F. That's going to be this angle right here is 70 degrees. And D, C, E, this angle right here, is going to be 110 degrees. And we can use these in equations as well. We can use this in equations as well. Notice that we have several angles labeled. Several angles labeled. I'm going to circle two angles that I know are equal to each other. Ask yourself for a moment, how does Mr. Reese know that these two angles are equal to each other? The answer, they're corresponding to each other. They're corresponding. This one is in the bottom left of its group of four. This one's in the bottom left of its group of four. They're corresponding to each other, so they have to be equal to each other. That's, in fact, one equation of three possible equations we could write. One equation, we could say 2x minus a 135 is equal to an x minus a 30. All right? That's one possible equation we could write. This other angle is not equal to the other two, but in fact, it adds up to 180 with the other two. This, these, this is a straight line, obviously. These two angles are going to be supplementary. They're going to add up to 180. So I could say x plus the x minus 30 equals 180. That's another equation I could write. Lastly, another equation I could write, these two angles are going to add up to 180 because they're same side interiors, so I could potentially write 2x minus 135 plus the x equals 180 again. All right, so three different options for equations I could write. Regardless of which equation you choose, regardless of which equation you choose, you're going to end up getting, let's see, if I add the 30 to both sides right here, that's going to... This equation is going to turn into a 2x equals 180 plus a 30 is a 210. So that means that the x has to be equal to 105. All right. So we know this angle is 105. Plug in 105 to the others. We're going to get a 75 for this one. We're going to get a 75 also for this one. So if we were asked for angle EDG, for example, E to D to G, that's this angle down here is 75. And BDG, this angle over BDG, this angle right here, X, is going to be 105. Last example we're going to look at is a systems of equations example. I want you to take a look at what's going on here. We have three parallel lines coming down, being cut by two transversals that are not necessarily parallel to one another. And they're, in fact, not parallel to one another. We have an angle that's 55 degrees, meaning that any angle that is corresponding to it is going to be 55 degrees as well. But that also means that if this is 55, its alternate interior is also going to be 55. We have a 60 degree angle, and its corresponding is also going to be a 60 degree angle. We can write a couple of equations then to relate these together. In the red here, we can write 5x plus 4y is equal to 55. because so we know these, this angle is equal to 55. In the blue, we can go ahead and write 5x plus 5y is equal to a 60. Now I'm going to choose to put this equation underneath, and I'm going to explain why in just a moment here. 5x plus 4y is equal to 55. And I'm just going to kind of cross out this top equation for a moment. The reason I'm doing that is I'm going to end up subtracting these equations. All right, I'm going to do that in pink here. In math, it is perfectly acceptable to subtract equations, just as you might subtract si sides of an equation. You might subtract variables on either side of an equation. You can subtract equations themselves. So if I go ahead and subtract straight down 5x minus 5x, that is 0x. 5y minus a 4y is going to be a single y. And a 60 minus a 55 is going to be a 5. If we cancel some things out, one doesn't need to be written. We just get a y equals 5. We're halfway done with the problem. We're supposed to find x and y. We already found y. Excellent. 
We already have y equals 5. I'm going to go ahead and plug in that y equals 5 into one of these equations. So I'm going to say 5x plus 4. Instead of writing a y, I'm going to write a 5 is equal to 55. It means 5x plus 20 is equal to 55. That means a 5x, 5x is equal to that 55 minus the 20, which is 35. And that's going to indicate that our x would have to be a 7. You know your x is a 7. We know that x equals 7. We know that y equals 5. You're done with your problem. Now, just a quick note here. When you get some coordinates like that, when you've solved the systems of equations, you'll see this in Algebra 2 quite a bit. Your teacher might ask you to put it in x, y notation. So you're going to put your x value 7, y value is 5. You might see that notation in Algebra 2 when you get up to Algebra 2. As always, email me if you have any questions. Have a delightful day. Take care.